Hi everyone, uh, this is Anna Meyer again, and this time I'm going to talk about settings in World Machine. Both the general settings that you have to set, set up the program itself, but also the project settings that are unique to each project or each map that, you, that you're going to create in World Machine. So let's start with the preferences that are general for the whole, for everything that you do in the program and they are found under world commands you find preferences and under there you have four four different uh, types of settings for tabs the first one is build options and here you have the multi-threading behavior and this is very much up to what CPU you're having the one I'm red running it on here it's a it's a six core CPU so I'm um, this is you can you basically can push these to the max and then do a test uh, render and see because if you push it too far then the software will will crash world machine has a nasty habit of having memory leaks and stuff if you try to push it too much so <coughs> this this is why i've uh, allowed uh, devices to multi -th uh, thread when available i actually unticked this one but that was from my previous build so actually I haven't test run this latest build of world machine so I'm going to fill that in and I'm also going to oh sorry it's not a, f a 6 it's an 8 core CPU so I'm going to put this up to to 4 or I can actually try and squeeze it out this way and see what we have here in this one um, no, this one is the six core machine. Sorry, I have three different machines I'm running it on. So this is the six core that I'm I'm showing it on. So so I'm going to take allow and uh, devices to multi-thread. This is really can be really beneficial when it works. There's been a couple of the development versions of World Machine when this have been kind of shaky to say the least, and all of a sudden you get glitches and and hangups and then the world machine crashes so what you do is that you you do a test run and and then you simply lower them until it seems to be stable it's a bit like overclocking and then you have memory and caching and this sets to 80 percent of the RAM this is a 64 gigabyte machine so I've set this to 80 percent of RAM which seems to be have been stable if you go up to 90 or 100 and it's you don't often get, I don't get crashes that often. What you get is that all of a sudden the render slows, slows to a crawl unless you have a very, very fast SSD. If you have one of these M2 or M3, what they're called, they're, they're really fast. That way you can probably go up to 100% and, and still get a decent performance. And that's the page data to disk recommended and that's that's basically when you start swapping to 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 disk and I have never unticked this one but if you do you might have a crash when you run out of, of physical memory so this that's just like the the multi-threading behavior you simply have to try and see what works best for you for your computer setup and for your type of, of, of work you wanted to do and then you have the the build options display statistics after after the build that's just a, a a splash screen that comes up afterwards and you can you can hide that if it takes longer and what you want to do after the the build showing in 2d or 3d or and for me I don't really care that much you just get an information that the build is done and that's it and low priority build thread that's if you have the machine and you want to do other things because rendering usually hogs it simply hogs everything in your machine and you can basically do nothing else while it's rendering so that's why if you do other things like watching YouTube you do yeah you talk to people on Skype or whatever then use the low priority build thread that means that it will not use the 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 first core and it will only use the the, the extra cores the higher cores so to speak whether you have a dual core it will only use one core that seems to be the case with with that but it also makes it take way longer so it's but it's it's a good way if you only have one machine to do that and here we have the graphics options and this resolution and these are the preview stuff it doesn't affect the the outcome when you render it and save it as as a 
elevation map or as a texture and stuff like this is only what you see when you interact with it and this you can basically push it all the way up and then you when you anybody will get so sluggish and so on so what I've done is that I've, I've gone on this machine almost half the way up and this one I've kept low so I can kind of zoom and scroll around and quickly get like a basic overview so these sliders just shove them up and down and then see where you get the the best performance visibility balance so you get what you what you need quickly and and then you can actually work in it because if you push them all to to the top here it the previews looks really really good but if you have a large terrain and a complicated terrain especially with a lot of erosion and things in it then it will take minutes sometimes just to render the preview and when you scroll and and zoom it will take maybe a minute just for it to basically do the, the start doing the update so just push this back and forth until you get the the amount of, of delay and lag that you can accept and then we have the display options this is some of the things that affect the uh, you have a uh, use uh, detailed uh, texture for 3d terrain if you have a really slow machine and especially if you have a graphics card it is not good you can simply untick this one and you will improve the performance a lot uh, obey mask hints for display hints um uh, obey mask display hints i'm not really sure what that is but it was ticked from the get-go so i as default so i've just kept it um and the other ones here i'm not really sure the show wireframe for mesh objects i haven't used me mesh objects in world machine yet to be honest so i'm not really sure but it's probably so you can you can see the um, how detailed the mesh is because you can export mesh objects to use in other 3d software from world machine and then you have this this is also a compatibility uh, this, this is how well it functions with your graphics card so it's the again this doesn't affect the the outcome the final thing it's just what it looks like well that might be bake lighting onto terrain might actually affect the final text text map I haven't tested that one so I'll have to to test and see because that might be a way to actually get the shadows baked in on the texture map which for me is a no-no because I want to have the shadow map, sep map separately so I can use the texture to render in view and, and other software but if you just want a top-down map that looks initially good right away without no photoshopping or anything then that that might be a good idea but I have to test because I don't actually know if that's the the, the final result or if it's only the preview here you have texture memory cache limit for some reason it has gone down to the bottom I usually bottom makes this maximum and this depends on what kind of graphics card this is a Nvidia Quadro with I think 8 gigabytes of, of graphics RAM so I can just bottom it out and it will still work set sky color this I think it's um, it both for the the um, the previews and I you if you export it out that I have to test this and see if this uh, affects the color of the texture map you export but I would be surprised I I think my guess is that this just affects the what the preview look like so you can look at it from like a, a day blue or if you're on March Mars type of terrain you want to have more reddish atmosphere or something so that's my guess that this is that's the case here you have the paths where you want uh, the default saving locations temporary files this is important because if this is where world machine will keep its scratch file the, the the swap file back and forth so if you have an SSD you can even have a separate fast SSD and use that specifically and set that document this machine I don't have that and then you have the macro storage I put that into my Dropbox because that way I can share it with my different machines and preset storage I also put that into my Dropbox because then I can share the assets between different machines without having to copy and paste and they're all there and that way I also set up Dropbox to use the drive H drive on all my machines so all the the um, the URLs or the the, the lock, doc, lock, 
the document location and this resources location for macros and textures and stuff will be the same regardless of which machine I'm using world machine on because I'm using it on three different machines and then you have UI this just affects what the software looks like one of the things that that the latest build in world machine they use the black UI here and at the beginning I didn't like it much because the I thought the quality was worse but it's kind of grown on me so now I, I kind of prefer it and you can also color the wires either by uh, packet type that's the original meaning uh, you have elevation data colored um, in this case white and then you have um, RGB or color data is colored blue and then there's for some reason there's some wires that are called they are colored black and I think that's bef bec before you've done your first build because I just opened it to record this video but once you've done the build all elevation wires will be white and all the R RGB wires will be uh, blue like over here you have the final textures and stuff then you get more and more blue and masks are also coded white because masks are in effect elevation data and then you can have show tool tips and and things like this and then you can uh, viewport this is the how you use the mouse to to tilt and, and zoom around and also want you if you want to favor rotation or lighting and for me it's rotation lighting I'd rarely change but it's where you get the shadows and stuff in the previews so this is the the world machine general preferences that that affects everything you do in in world machine but then you have also have the project settings and they you go in here on this one that is actually uh, titled world world extents and resolution but when you open it the window actually says pr uh, project settings and this is really important because this sets the the quality and the output the quality of the output and the general settings for this project first of all you have a number of extents you can be just one extent or you can have many extents and extents are what part of the the world you want to render and at what resolution and this is my uh, Flannies 2.0 project and it's already up to version 52 it's still very much in the experimental stage but here I have basically the whole Flannies map most of it not the the very edges but most of it here and that's 7864.36 kilometers and one of the kind of caveats with the uh, world machine is that they either go with metric or you go with internal units and I would love to have an imperial so I can have miles and stuff for, for that that's much better for D&D related projects or RPG projects because they usually measured in miles but you can work with you can have to convert it in your head and after a while you get used to it so here you set the the um, the extent size and you can lock the extent afterwards so you set the the uh, the width and the height and then the lower and upper right coordinates this can be done in the um, when you you have the um, the 3d view so I'll go in here and show you when in the layout view here you can actually zoom to extents and here you have the the, the extent is a, just a, a large so this is the whole flannies and if we wait a second here there will be a tiny little bit here you can actually su see my little experiments I have an experiment down here and you have Lendor Isle when I'm experimenting over here and this is the area that of, of interest for for my project first and foremost and you can actually go in and you can see tiles here and and if we zoom in here here you can see tiles and each tile is 4096 pixels so you can see this is this is an enormous area when you zoom out here you can see each of these areas is a 4000 pixels and that's why this is a five-year project at least but it's so and a lot of it is ocean so they don't need to be rendered at all but you probably have to render two-thirds or 60% or something is is land-based 
but here you set up the tiles and you can actually move this around so you can if you have a guide map like I have my Flannies map here you can actually move this around if it's unlocked you, you go in here and now I can move it around you see, and I can go to the edges here and I can make them larger and smaller until you have an extent that actually fit the the uh, terrain you want but there's another issue with with extents and now I'm going to to show you and first I'm going to lock this now so we, we have locked in so I'm not screwing it up and the the big caveat is the resolution if I build this whole area of the flannies at 2k meaning 2048 by 2048 pixels that means that each pixel is 3.8 kilometers and that's not particularly detailed at all and one of the basic things to think about here is that you you need to decide decide on what resolution the project will be in my case the my uh, Flannies 2.0 project will be 30 meters per pixel and that's when I'm going into the tile section because this I will not render more than maybe just to get a, some sort of overview of what areas I've done or something then I might render this large area but the final output I will use tiled but when you oh hang on a second I'm going to stay on this one so when you use when you decide on a resolution you have to stick with it because if you render one area at 30 meters per pixel and another area at 20 meters per pixel they will not match because fractals are finicky sensitive beings so so if you change the resolution you will also change what the landscape look like especially things like coastlines things that are set precise will shift often radically because if you get a, a, a coastline that that kind of if uh, the coastline is raised by a meter then you can have flood large areas with or, or, or large areas of, of what used to be ocean might be land or vice versa if the if the fractal all of a sudden kind of renders that area slightly lower than it would do at another resolution that's why things like lakes rivers and especially coastlines will they will be De the detail of them will change drastically between different resolutions and that happens when you do the preview what you do when you zoom in and out is that you change the resolution so when you zoom out you the terrain might look very different and then when you zoom in it might change again so that's why the preview is not really reliable so you you just have to make a small area and render it and in order to make small areas what you do is that you have several extents I have one extent here for the main where I can render a tile here I can I can render one of many tiles and the flannies here is 64 by 64 tiles so I can simply say I want to render that tile and none other and then I can output just like one of these tiles over here for instance but if you if you want to to have something that you work with you can create different extents so I have a bunch of I have a guide map extent that that's the big one over here that covers the whole guide map so I can simply render areas for the, and that's so I can use the guide map as a reference and then I have Flannies main that's this that's the whole of the Flannies continent with no oceans around it and then I have a 2k area I have a 4k area I have an 8k area and a 16k area and those are the ones here that's a 16k area that's an 8k area a 4 a 2 and a, and a tiny little one there that is my that I call variable that's just so I have one that I can scale if I for some reason want to look at things close up I, I can do the variable is kind of tricky because the variable doesn't have the detail scale of 30 meters per pixel all the other ones here are 30 meters per pixel whether these are 30 meters per pixel in in normal build and the main and the guide map of 30 meters per pixel in tiled options and you also have a memory usage here and conserve memory and this is 
can be really, really important. And I'm not really sure how it works in, techni in the technical terms, but it seems to be that it discards things it's already done more effectively, so it uses memory. I don't think it's, it doesn't seem to affect the result one bit, but it affects the, the time it takes to render. So if you use conserved memory, it takes long, seems to take longer to render, but it gets the same result. And what you should keep an eye out here, if this gets close to the size of your physical memory. This is a 64 gig, uh, gig machine and 13 gigabytes, no problem. But if you start getting up to 60 here, then I will start conserving memory and that way I can make sure. So this, the estimated memory use should never be more than 80 or 90 percent of your physical RAM because it, if, if it is then you start hitting that wall and it will take forever to render it and you're also more prone to crashes. And then you have another one with allow non-square extents and non-square extents if you're only going to use the results in as a top-down map in Photoshop it's perfectly fine to use non-square extents. But if you're going to import it into software like Vue and 3D Studio and, and other 3D software, they usually don't like non-square entities. So they want images for elevation and texture and stuff that are square. So that's why I normally always render it in squares because I'd never sure where I want the data, where I want to use the data. And now we have the go over to the tiled options. And here you set the tile First of all, I have to say what tile is. And the tiled uh, resolution and the tiled output is that instead of output the whole thing into one large image, you simply split it up in many tiny small ones. So my Flanny's main here, I've set up to 64 by 64 tiles. If I were to render all this, it would probably take the computer two years to do it. So that's why I will render one or two, maybe three or four tiles at a time. And you also get memory requirements that are crazy. If you want to render all the tiles, you need terabytes of, damage, of, of RAM, not gigabytes. So that's usually not the case. So what I render is I render a, a tile or two or maybe four or five at a time. The problem with tiles though is that the edges might not match. If you rent, if you set, that's why you have the blending percentage. I've set the blending percentage to 25%, which means that it will actually calculate a kind of a, a pseudo tile in between the others and then merge the result. And if I render five tiles or six or something in one go, those will match each other. I hardly have any blending issues apart from a few coastline issues here and there. But that's usually manageable. But if you render a set of tiles and build them and render them out and then close World Machine and then come back the next day and render a few others at a separate build, they, they will not match each other perfectly. They will match so and so, but not perfectly. So especially if you have like coastlines, lakes, rivers, and mountains. Flat terrain, usually no problem. You can just patch over the ugly bits in, in Photoshop. But if you have especially tricky er areas, eroded areas, you might have sand dunes, you might have have tricky cool uh, plateaus and stuff. That is can be tricky. The texture is usually easy. It, it's, easy to, to fix up the, the, the ugly bits and paint over and make good. But the elevation maps is really tricky to do because a grayscale, you can't even with the human eye and 32-bit or six, even 16-bit uh, resolution or uh, bit depth on, on the grayscale map, it's impossible with the human eye on most monitors to see the difference between one color or one elevation and the other. So you have to Use the, there, there are some techniques where you can use, but you normally end up with a little bit of artifacts. But it's so for close up, it's not good. But for large world map, it does, maps and stuff, it doesn't really matter. You can just smooth it out a bit and it will work. So it's up to the resolution. So it, if you render these tiles in low resolution for a large map, no problem. But remember, when you change the detail scale, the maps will not match exactly. So if you want a, a large area map that max, matches exactly the detailed area, you simply take all the renders and you 
you stitch them together in Photoshop and reduce the resolution. That's the only way to get a map that that actually matches to 100% matches the detail one. So it might be important depending on, on the project. So here you set the tile resolution. So each tile in my setting here is 4,000 by is 4K, 4,096 by 4,096 pixels, and the tiles per side 64, and the bleeding percentage. And if I tra go up and down with this, you see that the 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 detail scale goes up and down. So, and this is pretty much the max what you can do. You can do an area the size of the flannies. That's the biggest you can you can set a setting to. And actually I don't think I will ever use this. This was more for my test setup. Eventually I will do different areas of the flannies at different at so I will make s smaller areas with like 30 by 30 tiles so I can render them in one go and then I will patch up the ugly bits in between the areas that's probably what, how I will do it but on the other hand this is a multi-year project so I will probably might even abandon World Machine down the line and move into Gaia or or even VIEW and, and or World Machine might will probably still be part of it but other software will play a big part maybe even a bigger part down the line and that's why the de these settings are very important because if I render this as a detail scale of 30 meters per pixel I have to be able to basically use the same detail scale and detail resolution in in other software as well so this is the the uh, the horizontal resolution and there are a few other things you have tiling options merge uh, to single file this is great if you have a small area where you go up to maybe 16k or something and you can merge the tiles the problem is that that what you create you basically create a large build so if your memory requirements are here are higher than your RAM don't tick this because then you might have a crash at the end when the world machine has a nasty habit of crashing when you reach the, your physical RAM even if you have an SSD. On one of my sh machines I have an, an rated SSD set up and it doesn't seem to help. World Machine have crashed more often than not when I, when I do this. So I keep them separate and stitch them in Photoshop afterwards. The share uh, vertical uh, vertices that's simply that the pixels on, on each side should be match each other perfectly and that I, I think I've got better results especially when it comes to elevation with this but it's it's more a matter of taste than anything and then flip uh, y-axis orientation that I think has more to do when you when you export meshes because certain 3d software has the y-axis flipped or not so so that's something you have to look into where you export it to what software you're going to use it and then you calculate edge tiles on partial tile sets and that's that's something when you when you do only a few so then I usually have that one ticked I don't know why it was unticked I usually have that one ticked because I get less of a fuss between uh, different tiles when I do separate rendering it helps a little bit and here you have the naming convention and you get the the X and the Y coordinates and I get the resolution and here I get the name of the extent so it will be file there will be like 04 by X 04 and, and Y 04 and then and then after that the E will be replaced with Flanny's main here and you can start the tile numbering at 1 or 0 I usually like it to start at 1 rather than 0 because it's it's easier but some computer nerds that are nerdier than me they might want to have it 0 by 0 or there might be other software they can import it straight in that require that so you have to look into it and then we have one general setup and this is more important than you think and here you have the vertical resolution We've talked about the horizontal resolution is 30 meters per pixel in, in my Greyhawk, new Greyhawk project. But here you have the vertical resolution, and this is basically how tall you want the terrain to be. And I've set it to 10,000 meters, and I've set the base elevation, meaning the bottom, at minus 500 meters. So I go from shallow ocean to the mountaintops. And this, the, the World Machine works internally with 32-bit uh, color depth. So the elevation, you have 32 bits, so you have, what is it, like 18 million or 20 million. You have a number of million elevation uh, 
settings, so to speak, or, or steps up the ladder. But this can be tricky because it's hard. It's okay internally in World Machine. It can easily handle 10k altitude, like 10 kilometers in elevation difference, easy. The problem comes when you export it. And when you export it in really high detail, like like I did in my previous project, 10 feet per pixel, then you start seeing, even if you use an elevation of five kilometers, you start seeing that things are becoming like terraced. And it's, they're starting to look terraced because most things like Photoshop and View and others, they have a difficulty handle more than 16 bits. So that's why effectively you can't really export 32 bit because first of all, the files will is much bigger 32 bit compared to to 16 bit and also a lot of software has a difficulty Photoshop has a difficulty and view and others can it's hard for them to manage 32 bit so 16 bit no problem they just take it 16 bit tiff and it works so that's why I I've, I've kind of I kept it to 10,000 I would love to go up to 20,000 meters because some of the mountains I envision in the fantasy world are way taller than they are in, in our normal world but you have to have a trade-off so in this when I have 30 meters uh, resolution horizontally I I've tested and it seems to work fairly well to have 10,000 meters in 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 vertical resolution. So you basically, how big is that cube of of the, the maximum detail, so to speak, the, the detail you can you can get. And you can also set um, the units it's using. You can use world machine internal units or you can use kilometers. And I always use kilometers because it's the, you have no clue of what the world machine units actually are. The, the, the occasional, you get an occasional hiccups because some devices might revert to go home to mama and all of a sudden they display things in world machine units. So you get a lot of decimals because the world machine unit seems to go up to 10 and then you have like decimals for the, the, the parts. So, so, but so sometimes you might see weird things, but those are usually for masks and selectors and stuff. So you can usually, I, I can live with it, but most outputs and stuff you can see things in kilometers and here you have default scaling operator this one seems to be I'm not really exactly when it's used but it seems to be when you have things that erosion for instance if you have things that like when you import things when you rescale an imported um, elevation map or texture or something it fills in the blanks by using various things so you can set here so big cube big soft and it, the fractal and self preserve these are the things if you used Photoshop and you have scaled up an image you recognize some of these so they are basically the same ones I think that fractal should be the best one that's one I've used before but this is just still experimental so I haven't gone in and, and changed that much and you can set roughness here and the the most obvious or most visible when this actually kicks in is in areas that don't get proper erosion they will just be filled in with a general kind of make it look like earth you get like a, a general default erosion of those areas those slopes and that and in some areas you can simply see it's like a wave pattern that comes and it looks okay sometimes and and but it, it kind of you can start seeing it it starts to look very similar in different areas and that's not really good so so for me the general issue have been rivers the river erosion seems to use this so that's my my big uh, kind of goal that I worked on now for years is trying to re re take take this away and replace it with proper erosion and which can sometimes be tricky when you use masks and stuff especially rivers have been really tricky but you can get some decent results that's the you can play with it if it looks funny so that's the, the thing and you can also name your files here and put some information when you send it to others so that's the and oh yeah we have one more the default uh, relative file path so so if you that will be the the default uh, path for for resources in uh, imported resources like textures elevation inputs and stuff like that so that's the the setup how to set up your file and if anyone un wonders why there's only this little bit of the flannies uh, visible 
in the on the guide map it's because the guide map is so large I'm using the 600 dpi input so in order to make world machine not too sluggish I only import one or two of the tiles so you can set not only tiled export you can have tiled import as well but and uh, remind that some of you might use the basic version of World Machine and then you don't have support for tiled input and output. It's only the professional version that has that support. Okay, I think that was uh, what I wanted to cover in the um, the basic, the settings and pr uh, the program uh, preferences and project, uh, project settings. So I will be back hopefully within a couple of days and we will look at some of the more uh, how to export things out when you render things, how to export and save your data. Okay, thank you so much for your support and um, talk to you soon. Bye.